Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Somebody in one of the earlier videos had requested some more door knocker options. So today I thought we would make a door knocker starting with a piece of one inch square bar. This is just something I found out there in the scrap pile. And this piece is seven inches long. So that's what, about 25 millimeter square bar by 180 millimeters long. It's just, I'm gonna make this in two pieces a back plate that has the pivot point, and then the door knocker itself. And I'm gonna try and forge all this out of this one piece of square bar. Just a little personal challenge. I'm going to work both parts of this while the bar is still connected as long as I can. So I'm gonna start by isolating the mass for a lump that will be the knocker part. I'm going to start drawing this down to a square bar, but I'll probably finish it after I cut the two pieces apart. I just want to knock the sharp corners off of that end so that they're not in my way. I think I'm going to turn this around and on this other side I want to fuller in two places and draw it out lengthwise and in the middle I'm going to fuller lengthwise and draw it out sideways and those sideways pieces will become the ears that hold the clapper in place or knocker or whatever you want to call it. A striker would be really nice for working on something like this. I don't have one of those available, but I do have some other options, like a treadle hammer. Or a power hammer. As long as I'm at the power hammer, I'm going to go ahead and draw some of this out just to make it a little bit quicker and easier. You can certainly do it all at the anvil, and you can certainly cut this out of some heavier material to get the same profile I'm going for. Just a different approach depending on your skills, your materials, and your tools. Adding the second puller on the back side helps kind of open up the first puller so you're less likely to push material into that groove and create a cold shut. So this is a good way to help prevent cold shuts when working this way. Of course, you could also do this under a hydraulic press or a ply press. Whichever tools you have available is the right tool for the job. I think this is a good time to go ahead and cut this and separate the two different portions of this door knocker. I'm just going to knock the rag off of there real quick. You could certainly do this with a hot rasp. Now I want to finish drawing out the parts that will be the back plate for this. And I want those to flare out. I think a nice, graceful, kind of roundish, instead of a crisp, angular, triangular shape, will look nice. So to do that, I'm going to use this great big rounding hammer and see if I can get this to flare out nicely as I draw it out. 
kind of going for about quarter inch thick for the back plate. I'm going to knock that outside corner down and start spreading this before I take it to the face of the anvil. Folding over a little right there, so I'm going to need to take that to the grinder and clean that up before I make a cold shut right there. Now I'm certainly on the right track here, but it's not exactly what I had in mind. The biggest problem is that I need to fold these ears up and I don't have a, enough material there to fold up. Plus this is too wide, because when they fold up they need to surround this piece and that's going to be the the clapper that actually does the knocking. So I'm going to need to reduce the material in here so it's about the width of, of this. So it's going to make it a little bit skinny. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. The other option would be to set this up with separate ears in there. And that wouldn't look bad to go ahead and just put two extra little tabs in there. That's a pretty simple, straightforward thing. In fact, it might actually be easier than what I have in mind. But I'm going to continue on with my original plan just to see what it looks like. So that means I need to remove some more material in here, especially right here at this neck, and probably reduce this in size. I don't think it needs to be as big as it is to hold this. So I'm just going to lay that out and then we're going to go back to the grinder. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your next order. I think this shape is going to work. Next thing I need to do is bend these ears up so we've got a place to mount the centerpiece. Then we'll work on the centerpiece, clean this up a little bit. Should be ready to assemble it.
If that fits over your vise jaw, you don't need that spacer, but that spacer keeps it away so you can bend that. This is still wider than I need, so I'm going to drive these down a little bit more at the anvil. I think I'm going to go ahead and work on that other piece before I do anything else here and just kind of fit them to each other as I go. So that means I need to round this up so that it looks nice inside the door knocker. I think that's what I want. So the idea then is that that will go in there and my ears still aren't big enough. Rats. So that's the next thing to work on.
We're going to use a piece of 3 8 rod to make the rivet for this. I'm using a real light hammer with rapid blows so that the upset is more right at the end. I want kind of a flared out rivet head on this instead of a typical round head rivet. Just an aesthetic decision. I'm going to finish this with my usual Johnson's paste wax. Any paste wax works or any other finish you like will work just fine. There's nothing particularly special about this. Just a finish I like. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. If you'd like to see more shorter blacksmithing videos, I have a second channel, Black Bear Forge 2, and I will link to that right over here. If you'd like to see what I'm up to when I'm not in the shop, I have a personal vlog channel, just John Switzer, and I'll link to that over here. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.